Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. All right, let's switch gears because I do want to get to another topic that I think is worth noting. We got to talk about what's going on with Kentucky big man Zvonavir Ivisic. Call him Big Z, okay? So this was a topic we hit on a lot in the fall, and we haven't, I've just kind of stayed out of the way because I have assumed that it would work itself out, but it hasn't, and I'm frustrated, and I would be remiss if I did not talk about it right now. All right, so Kentucky's rolling. They're awesome. I think they're the second best team in the country behind UConn, but that's neither here nor there. Um, But I bring it up because all season long, there's been this cloud over the team involving the eligibility of a kid named Zvonavir Ivisic. For people who don't remember, we talked about it when he committed. Seven foot two Croatian, okay? So he's from Croatia originally. Nobody knew much about him. He declared for last year's NBA draft after playing in Europe. Withdraws from the draft. Everyone thinks that he's going going back to Europe to play. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you hear on like a Friday afternoon, Kentucky's recruiting this international kid. And then you start to see highlights. You're like, this kid's really good. And then like a day later, he commits. I think he we first found out that we were in, they were even recruiting him on a Thursday or Friday. He commits on a Monday or Tuesday. And ever since then, we've been waiting to see this kid in action. Once he commits... There was an issue with his uh, transcript or whatever. He was not at first admitted to the university. That was the first big hurdle. That was frustrating. You sat there and said, what the heck is going on with this kid? How is Kentucky not admitting him? And he gets to camp. uh, You know, I think he didn't even get to campus until late September, early October, because the school did not admit him. So then the school admits him. We're getting closer to the season. And then he starts getting held out of games. And it's like, well, what the heck's going on here? And we find out that he has not yet been cleared by the NCAA. And so I bring it up to very simply say, it is now January 18th, 19th, 20th, as you're listening to this. Zvonavir Ivisic, or as Kentucky fans call him, Big Z, has not yet been cleared by the NCAA. And I am here to tell you it's ridiculous. I'm here to tell you it's unfair. And I am here to tell you enough is enough. The good news is I do think we're going to get some resolution on this soon. So let me just say this, okay? One thing. We obviously have a lot of Kentucky listeners of this show, okay? But I have never once said anything that I don't believe to be true. But I believe the NCAA is railroading this kid, and I believe the fact that he is not eligible is completely unfair. It's not because it's Kentucky. It's not because of whatever. It's because it's BS nonsense. By the way, you know how much BS it is? How about the fact that Kentucky fans have actually bought a billboard in Indianapolis uh, right near the NCAA headquarters saying free Big Z? But it's ridiculous for a number of reasons. One, look at the landscape of college basketball, okay? Let's just let's just talk facts. Let's take out opinions, all that stuff. One, every single transfer in America is eligible, Okay. So kids, they've transferred two, three, four times. Their transcripts are a mess. They didn't pass this class. They didn't do this. They didn't do that. And the NCAA just kind of threw up their hands and said, you know what? We can't win this battle. Everybody's eligible. You transfer three times in three years, barely got any credits. Who cares? You're eligible. So all these transfers are eligible. Yet this kid, Big Z, is not. How about the fact of this? We have international players on almost every team in the country at this point, not quite every team, but pretty darn close. A lot of them coming directly from overseas. Arizona has multiple international players. All got cleared this offseason in time for the start of the season. UCLA, multiple freshmen. I think one of them wasn't cleared for the start of the season, but he ended up getting cleared probably the first week or two of the season. That was, by the way, why I thought, why I've kind of not really spoken out about Big Z. Because I sat there and said, well, wait a second now. If the UCLA guys got cleared, my assumption is that this kid will get cleared soon. Nope. Three, this is the craziest part. The issue is something to do with his quote-unquote amateurism because he played professionally in Europe. 
Well, one, I'm not naming names, but all these kids play professionally in Europe. Okay. Like, you know, just do some research on some of these guys, these high profile international kids that are coming to the U S they all played professionally, but here's the crazy part. If the argument is they took money as professionals, guess who else is taking money? Guess who else is taking money? Literally everyone in college basketball, pretty much you have kids making probably seven figures at this point via collectives, via NIL, via, you know, getting paid to play essentially. Every school, high major, mid major, low major. I'm not saying every kid everywhere is getting money, but most are getting a little something. And a lot of them are getting six figures, seven figures. So the issue you're telling me is that there's an issue with his amateurism, even though everyone in college basketball is getting paid. It makes no sense. And, and finally, I would say this, and I said this early when there was an, an issue with his eligibility. If if he was incapable, like I would have no problem with the NCA not allowing him to play if he was a sham student, un, incapable. Listen, I can't even speak English. What the heck? Incapable of doing the work, okay? Like if this was just, he's coming to play basketball, he can't speak the language, he's only going to be here a semester, whatever. Then I'd say the NCA is like, well, if he can't do the work, that's one thing. But he can do the work. I don't have access to Kentucky's, you know, private uh, academic records. But according to Calipari, he has done the work. He was an, uh, not an elite, but he was an excellent student in his first semester on campus in the winter. And so I bring it up because what are we doing, NCA? I'm not Mr. Anti-NCAA, blame the NCA for everything. But this one feels like a no-brainer. Grab the rubber stamp, stamp, approval, boom, next one. This isn't something you need to fight. This isn't a battle you're going to win, and you just look stupid for doing this, given all the other circumstances. Given that given that kids are getting paid, given that kids uh, are able to transfer two or three times, it makes no sense. And so I'm not going to go on and on. The only silver lining that I would really say about this, it does appear as though we are getting to the finish line with this. You know, Calipari went on a nice little rant. Um, he went on a nice little rant. Uh, after the game on Wednesday night against Mississippi State, he did the whole thing of, I love this kid. He has such a positive attitude. But he said, like, let's just get this thing going. And I think Calipari's kind of biting his tongue because he knows it's close. He doesn't want to say anything that's going to screw up the process. And then I did tweet this out the other night is, listen, you know, I know a few people in the Kentucky basketball ecosystem. Um, and And usually when I shoot a text or make a phone call to get some information, most people are usually pretty responsive because they want, you know, they want the media and I am the media, whether, you know, people like, like people in the media don't want to be in the media anymore, but we are. And I bring it up because whether you want to call them sources, whatever, like I have people that I know in that orbit and generally they'll tell you what's going on because they want the media to know if there is a grave injustice going on, they want you to be aware so that you can use your platform to speak out about it. This is ridiculous. This is whatever, blah, blah, blah. I only bring it up because I did reach out to a few people kind of in that Kentucky basketball orbit, and it's been crickets. And I think what that says to me is that, again, what I just said with Calipari, they're getting close. They don't want anything screwed up. If they, you know, if, if they share too much with a media member and then I go off because, you know, tours can get a little crazy on social media sometimes – then maybe that would screw it up. I don't think like anyone's actively hiding things from anyone, myself or anyone else in the media. I just think it's one of those, they're saying like, we're really close. We don't need any messaging from other than probably John Calipari himself, maybe a player or two that does media availability. But I just bring it up, Kentucky fans, I think you're close. I can't promise it, but I feel pretty good that we're going to see this kid in a Kentucky uniform soon.